In this tutorial we're going to be using the Gradle image loading library to load our image thumbnails as well as our video thumbnails for our media store uh, thumbnail viewer application. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials, my name's Nigel. Okay, um, as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be using the Glide Image Loading Library to generate and load our thumbnails, especially for the video thumbnails. A um, number of reasons why I want to use a third-party library such as Glide to do this. One of them is um, its performance, we can, they'll set up their own background tasks to do these activities as well as creating the bitmaps which we hadn't yet implemented currently in the tutorial series. So and yeah, mainly just performance and there's going to be a bit of ease of use to do this method as well. Okay, so we'll make a start. So first thing we need to do is to get the actual Glide image loading library. Um, if I just click across to here, we can see here, here's the details of the uh, Gradle dependencies. We use Gradle using Android Studio. So here's the details of the dependencies here. So we need um, Glide, of course, and we need a support library. Okay, the versioning's not quite right here for my current environment. So I'm going to skip across to my website, um, scroll on down, and here's the dependencies I'm using. It's just the versioning numbers. Um, quite straightforward but you can use whatever versioning suits your Android environment. I'm just going to copy that go into Android Studio. I'm now in my up here build.gradle file, build file so we'll just add those dependencies save that and we will need to resync that in other words pull down these latest libraries to our Android Studio environment. That's now done okay so the next step here is I want to go into my main activity here and what Gradle is going to require is it's going to require the location of our image or our video file to generate the thumbnail sizes. So uh, what I need to provide that and the information I've set up in my loader just to get the, um, the data which is the uh, location of where those files reside. So I need to add that to my projection, projection for my cursor loader. So if we go to the OnCreate loader here, you would have done all this in one of the previous media store tutorials. And we're just going to add the actual data which will point to the location of the image or the video. So it's media store, files, file columns, in this case it's going to be data. And just put a little comma below there. Okay, so that's now going to be provided in the cursor once the cursor gets generated for us and we then pass that down to the Media Store adapter. So let's go into the Media Store adapter now. So I'm going to create a new method here where we can provide the URI for the Glide image loading library. So I'll just call it down here, make it private. It's going to return a URI for the location and we can call it get URI from Media Store. And it's going to take the position, we'll get the adapter position. Um, so that's all right. So we'll just pass in this position argument here. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to get the index from the actual data itself in the Media Store. So let's create a member for this. I'll just call it ID data. Oh, it's not. Let's call it data index. It's probably a more applicable name. And now we'll call our cursor and it's going to get column index and we'll feed into the media store column for the data. So we'll have that. Now we need to traverse to the right row in our media store. So we'll call our media store cursor and it'll be moved to position with the position we've just supplied. Okay, so the next step here is we'll now 
have the applicable line of rote inside the cursor to extract the URI. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the actual string of data itself, which points to the location of where the video or the image is saved. So I'll create a string, and I'll just call it data string. And I can call my media store cursor uh, get string with the data index we just set out before. So now I've got a string that points to the location of where our files kept. Now next step here is to put that into our URI format that Glide requires. So I'm going to create a URI and I'll call it media URI. And we've got to set up the right format here. So we've got a little bit of format. I'm going to use the part URI pass method for that. It's so called URI pass. And here, I'm just, we need to set up the file. So we need to set up the file in this format. Then we can pass our um, data string. Okay, so we've got the URI. Now it's just a matter of just returning that. Okay, so that method's now being created. We're going to use that to supply the URI to the Glide image loading library. So now let's get and set up Glide itself to uh, load these thumbnail images into the image view. Okay, so on bind view holder here, this is where the current code using the media store thumbnail generation and get thumbnail happens. So we're just going to comment this out. Now we can call Glide. And we pass activity. Remember, we, from the previous tutorial, we've supplied the activity, the calling activity to this uh, adapter. So here it is here. Now, the next thing here is we want to load it with the URI we just set before. So we can just call the get URI from media store and pass the position that's already been provided to us in the argument in the onbind view holder. Okay, so we now have, we're now providing it with the URI. I want to do a couple other things here. I want, basically I don't want my media store viewer application to change at all. I want it to look exactly the same as previously. So what I'm going to do here is set the thumbnail width and height to what's produced before through the media store get thumbnail um, APIs and I'm also going to have to center and cut that in position so it looks exactly the same. So we're going to do a couple of things here. One will be the center crop where we center in it and crop out the outsides that will get us looking similar and we're going to resize it by calling override and these are the sizes that were produced last time by using the uh, media store thumbnail API. Okay, and the last thing here is just to put it into our image view. And we get that from the view holder itself, and it's got a method of get image view. And that's it, Glide is now set up. Okay, so let's try running that and see what happens. And once it has been loaded by Glide, we should see a performance improvement as well. So we'll try running that. Okay, so application's now started. Let me record it so you can see what's going on here. The application's now started. It should look exactly the same for our cropping. And I'm getting a little bit more smoother um, scrolling as well. And also, we sh what we should see here is when we start it up first, it should start up a lot quicker with the thumbnails due to the optimizations that the Glide library provides us. So that concludes this video. So what we've seen is by using a third-party image loading library such as Glide, we can still generate thumbnails from our videos but we will also get all the added benefits of the optimizations and the um, using the caches and
preloading and all those benefits as well which um, improve, improve the performance of our application which is quite important. And we also saw that using the Glide Image Loading Library we don't actually have to do too much more work itself. It's just, um, in some ways it might be simpler using Glide than using the um, thumbnail generation from the media store. And, and in the example used here, we saw that using the Glide Image Loading Library, there wasn't too much more work involved with setting it up in comparison with the Media Store um, thumbnail uh, generating bitmap APIs as such. So for me, it's a preferable alternative for generating thumbnails from our Media Store, and all the optimizations have been built into it as well. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. If you want to get notified of future update episodes to this series or any of the other videos I'm, I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below. And if you want to get up to date with any of the announcements, new, uh, uh, news, uh, videos, articles, uploads to get, get GitHub, I notify those on my get my thumb right, I notified those on my um, social media account, so click across to those so you can get updated with all the news and events of um, mobile application tutorials. Check out my website just above me, you can click on that, that's a good place to actually watch these videos. Not only do you get, do you get the video itself, you get information of how to get the code from GitHub, as well as a brief description of the changes we make throughout the video tutorial itself. And if you've got any questions that aren't related to a suspected bug in the tutorial itself, you will need to contact me over in um, Code Mentor itself. So you can just click to the link just there. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.